Madam President, at this very minute across the country, families are wondering how they're going to survive financially now that mom or dad is out of a job. Hourly workers whose businesses have closed temporarily are praying that they'll still have a job to go back to when this is all over. Small businesses are facing agonizing decisions about whether they'll have to lay off employees or close their businesses altogether. And Democrats, Madam President, well, Democrats have been focused on fuel emissions standards and early voting. That's right, Madam President. In the midst of an unprecedented health and financial crisis, Democrats have been delaying a major relief bill in hopes that they can include a laundry list of their pet projects, projects that have absolutely nothing to do with providing financial relief to Americans or ensuring that medical professionals have the resources they need to fight this virus. Madam President, Republicans developed this legislation in conjunction with Democrats. And it was teed up, being written up Saturday, Saturday evening, right to vote Sunday morning, when Democrats voted to block even getting on the bill, even getting on the bill. They said, well, we need to block it now because we may not be able to block it later. Not, of course, acknowledging that there is yet another 60-vote hurdle that they would, we would have to get over before we got to final consideration of the bill. But it's been teed up and ready to go now since Saturday night. And we've made a lot of changes since then to the legislation to address the Democrats' priorities. And Madam President, I thought we were very close to agreement on a final bill. Of course, then the Democrat leadership of the House and the Senate stepped in. They apparently decided that this was a perfect opportunity to implement a bunch of Democrat pet projects that have nothing to do, nothing to do with fighting the coronavirus or helping the American families who are suffering financially at this very minute. Madam President, I know my Democrat colleagues have come to regard bipartisanship as a bad word over the past three years. But I had hoped, I really sincerely had hoped, that in this hour of serious need, the Democrats would be able to put aside their prejudices and work with Republicans to pass this critical legislation. But apparently that was too much to hope for from the Democrat leadership. Madam President, neither my colleagues nor I have given up on reaching an agreement. We're still working, and I'm still hoping that we will arrive at a final bill sometime later today. But we should already have passed this legislation three days ago. And the blame for not passing it lies squarely on the Democrat leaders' shoulders. I really hope that they'll rethink their decision to hijack this relief bill for their political purposes because the American people deserve better. The bill before us is filled with resources to help struggling families, provide relief to workers, and enable businesses to retain their employees during this crisis. Madam President, Americans need this bill today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not when Democrats are finally satisfied that they've scored enough political points. Today. And I hope that my Democrat colleagues will urge their leadership to come to the table and pass this legislation. American workers and families need relief, and they need it now. We can't afford, Madam President, to let them down. All we need is a few Democrat members who are willing to go against their leadership and vote with us to pass legislation that addresses all the fundamental issues that I just mentioned. Assistance to families, displaced, people who need cash, people who need to pay bills, assistance to those who are unemployed in the form of unemployment insurance, increasing the state's unemployment insurance that people already get by $600 per person per week for three months, $2,400 checks for married couples and $500 per child on top of that to go out immediately upon passage of this bill. For small businesses, 
$350 billion set aside to pay payroll, to keep employees working, hopefully to keep those jobs there so that they don't go away, and then when this thing is over, that those jobs are still there for people. Those are all provisions in this bill that are designed to help working Americans, families, employees keep their jobs and keep their livelihood until we get to a better place, which hopefully will be very soon. And in the meantime, deal with the health care crisis, which this also addresses. Look at this. There's over $240 billion in relief in this bill dealing principally with the challenges that our health care community has. $75 billion directly for hospitals. Another $25 billion would come in reimbursements under Medicare to hospitals, so $100 billion for hospitals, $20 billion for veterans' health care, $11 billion for vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostics, and other preparedness needs, $4.5 billion for the Centers for Disease Control, $1.7 billion for the Strategic National Stockpile, $12 billion for America's military, also an important component in this fight, $10 billion for block grants to states, $12 billion for K-12 education, $6 billion for higher education, $5 billion for FEMA disaster relief, $10 billion for airports, and $20 billion for public transportation emergency relief. In all, just in this particular provision of the bill, $242 billion in assistance, $186 billion, I might add, which would run through and be administered by the states. So all told, between the amount that's going to families, workers, employees, small businesses, about $1.1 to $1.2 trillion that could be on the street today helping address the health care and economic crisis that's being felt and experienced by the American people. But no, we're still here. We're still here waiting for uh, the Democrats to conclude at some point, we hope, that all these political games that they're playing, and it does seem like a big transaction for them, political winners and political losers, and the only loser we know is the American people in all this, because the longer this goes on, the harder it becomes for them to get back to where they were, the harder it becomes for that small business to stay open or to keep those employees employed, Every single day is costing the American economy and American workers jobs, resources, wages that they could be putting forward to take care of them and their families. Now, the Democrats have said that there are, they want more money for hospitals. That's negotiable. They want more conditions on the loan fund that larger businesses would be able to access in order to keep their businesses afloat. That's a negotiable thing. There are many of our members here who support those very things. They say they want more money for state and local governments, probably, too, something that can be negotiated. And I keep having rank-and-file Democrat members come up to me and say, well, this is the list of things that we want you know, to negotiate on and get in this bill. And I'm like, well, those are all things we're willing to negotiate on. And frankly, many of our members would support uh, some of the things that some Democrats want to do there, too. So what's the holdup? Well, I don't think rank-and-file Democrats even realize what their leadership is demanding just past those doors and trying to get done in this bill. Getting a, the, the, the Green New Deal into effect, requiring basically federalization, nationalization of our election system in this country, all kinds of new requirements that benefit their special interest groups, that's what this is about. That's what this is about. This is, a, this is the hijacking of a crisis to try and get permanent changes on a political agenda that they haven't been able to get, normally wouldn't be able to get under other circumstances. And we're happy to debate all those issues. We're happy to have that debate about all those other things they want to talk about. That's what we do here. That's what we do in the United States Senate. You've got a good idea. You think something needs to be changed in this country. Let's come here. Let's debate it. Let's get a piece of legislation that we can talk about and see if we can come up with a solution. But right now is not the time to be debating ancillary, unrelated issues 
Now is the time to put out the fire. And there is a fire burning in this country right now. And it's affecting every American. Every single American is being affected. Today is the day. And I hope and pray that when the Democrat leadership comes out here on the floor, that they're going to announce that today is the day that they're going to work together with us on a bill which they had input in. Two of the great fallacies about this legislation is, one, this is a partisan bill. They know that isn't true. Their rank-and-file members who participated in the working groups know that isn't true. But their leadership can, keeps coming out here and announcing that this was a partisan bill. This is not a partisan bill. This was constructed in a way that gave both sides input and which includes, includes many of the priorities that both sides brought to the table. That's what this bill represents, Madam President, and it represents the very things that they said they wanted, an emphasis on workers, an emphasis on un unemployed people, an emphasis on small businesses, and then the other great fallacy that they, thing that they've raised, that this is somehow a bailout for big businesses, big businesses who have been forced to shut down. Look at the airlines, 10 to 20 percent capacity. Why do you think that is? That's not their fault. That's not their choosing. They've been forced to shut down. And there are industries in industry sectors all across this country who are being affected in the same way. And all their, this bill includes is a, is a provision that allows them to access credit so that they can keep their operations going, so they can continue to pay the employees, millions of whom are employed by big, big businesses across this country. And so the Democrats continue to come to the floor and say, this is a bailout for big corporations. We need more emphasis on workers. Who do you think employs the workers? And as I mentioned, all the provisions in this bill, this is a pro-worker bill. This is about getting paychecks in the hands of American workers. That's what this bill does. That's what this bill is about. It is just sad and regrettable chapter that in this time of enormous crisis, something we haven't seen, certainly in my lifetime, and you have to go back in the annals of history a really, really long time, to find a time when we're facing the kind of circumstances, the find, kind of crisis, the kind of hardship, both in terms of people's health and livelihood, as well as their economic livelihood in our history. Today's the day to get this done. We can't wait any longer. Time for political games is over. It's time to act. And I hope and pray that by the end of the day today that we will see the kind of cooperation, the kind of bipartisanship that will let us address the needs of hardworking Americans who are fearful for themselves and their families. Madam President, I yield the floor.